Hello and namaskar dear friends. Today we are going to start with the previous year questions of June 2021 exam. So far we have covered the March 2023 and October 2022 papers. Okay. So let's start. First question is a transmitter encodes messages into A. Artifacts B. Noise C. Models D. Signals It is a very basic and fundamental question. If you have read the models of communication, you must have come across this term transmitter. So the function of transmitter is to encode messages into signals which are then passed on to the receiver which translates these signals into the original message. Next question is the media sufficiency standards were first formulated by A. UNDP B. UNICEF C. UNESCO D. UNHRC Which of the UN organization formulated the media sufficiency standards? So, the correct answer is UNESCO. These standards define the framework within which media can best contribute to and benefit from. Uh, remember friends that whenever uh, such things are asked and uh, the UN agencies are mentioned. Generally, it is UNESCO, which is uh, related with the media, uh, media standards or associated with media things. Okay. The next question is the curricular model for mass media education by Sirka Minkinin was based on research in number one sociology and psychology, number two political science and economics, number three history and philosophy. Number four, public administration and geography. So, uh, the correct answer for this is sociology and psychology. Let me tell you uh, more about this. UNESCO had undertaken two important studies for enhancing media literacy efforts in 1970s. First was called Media Studies in Education and it was printed in 1977. It uh, tried to demonstrate the media literacy and screen education in West Europe, Soviet Union and USA and some other international organizations. Okay, the another study was called a general curricular model for mass media education. It was written by Sirka Minkenin, which was a Finland media education expert, Finnish media education expert. And he introduced a curricular model for mass media education intended for secondary education, aimed at understanding the different types of media and critical using of these media. This work was based on his research in sociology and psychology. Okay, the writer not only put emphasis on mass media education and film education, but also expressed the relations between media education and general education and why media education is necessary. Uh, remember, the curricular model uh, was uh, so is associated with Sirka Minkenin. Okay, next is the concept of mean world syndrome is seen in. Number one, spiral of silence. Number two, cultivation analysis. Number three, helical theory. Number four, transactional analysis. Which of the following theories introduced the mean world syndrome? So, the correct answer is cultivation analysis. This theory was put forward by George Gardner. And this term was coined by George Gardner in 1970s. So, mean world syndrome, what is it? It is basically a cognitive bias wherein people may perceive the world to be more dangerous than it is. This is due to long-term moderate to heavy exposure to violence-related content in mass media. In the early stages of research, mean world syndrome was only discussed as an effect of watching television. In uh, today's time also, we talk about the negative effects of mass media. Like for example, people, uh, children who uh, play video games, violent video games like PUBG, uh, Valorant, etc. They, their behavior gets more aggressive as compared to those children who do not uh, indulge in such kind of media. Or say, for example, if on television, people who used to watch the shows like uh, Savdhan India, Crime Patrol, etc. They were, uh, they perceived the world to be more dangerous, to be more bad than re in reality it is. Okay, so it is mean world. Mean means bad. Mean world syndrome. Next is, Polo Freire described the top-down modernization project as A. Existentialism, B. Assistentialism, C. Universalism, D. Institutionalism. 
so top down modernization project he described is it as assistentialism assist helping so in chapter 3 of pedagogy of the oppressed polo freire continues to develop his thesis on helping remember this book pedagogy of the oppressed it is written by polo freire so in this he uh, elaborates on the idea that those who educate facilitate or help in any way be it social workers research teams from universities and so forth must first learn to listen to and work with those whom they are helping for example ngos when they are trying to help the people at the ground level for example rural people they need to listen to those people for on whom they like those for those who they are helping assisting so that's why it is called assistentialism freire is critical of professionals who have internalized the pattern of institutional domination in which they were socialized so that they come to believe that being in a position of power or ha- having some form of institutional authority allows them to help the oppressed with top down strategies and means freire's criticism is that these helpers have come to believe that they have the right type of knowledge the expertise and the answers to what the people they are helping need the problem with this approach is that those who offer their help and expertise those who are confident in their good intentions and qualifications do not always trust that the ones who are the most knowledgeable of the problem and the solution needed are the same people who need the help what basically paul freire is trying to say is consider if you want to help the tribal people you want to uplift them but you are applying your approach your own philosophy on how to help them for example you want that they should get uh, work in factories or construction uh, they should work at as a uh, uh, in service sector but have you ever asked to them what they really want maybe they want to live with the nature and you should not doubt their knowledge their knowledge about nature their knowledge about the things around them so you should work in tandem with them in collaboration with them and you should not consider them less knowledgeable than you and uh, in fact they are they have more knowledge of the problem than you have uh, for example in a village uh, if you want to do something for a village so you should talk to the people now what are their main problems which issues they want to uh, address first at priority so here is what he is trying to say okay the next question is <clears throat> in developmental communication being diagnostic diagnostic will lead to if you diagnose the problem in developmental communication what will it lead to number 1 diversity of identities number 2 suppression of identities number 3 explosion of identities number 4 fusion of identities so the correct answer is fusion of identities remember this as a fact this identity will help in bringing human resources together for the total welfare of the individual and the community at large uh, you can remember it in this way that development in developmental communication we try to uh, to develop or to do the good for all and for that people need to come together so and so after that total welfare will happen so here what will happen is fusion of identities the identities will merge okay next is when a third variable remaining unseen causes an association of two variables it is called a, it is a variable which is unseen but it, it seems to cause the association of two variables then it is called absentee number 1 absentee variable number 2 extraneous variable number 3 spurious variable number 4 third order variable so the correct answer is spurious variable <coughs> spurious variable or spurious effect it is a term used to describe a statistical relationship between two variables that would at first glance appear to be causally related but upon closer examination only appear so by coincidence or due to the role of a third intermediary variable means in uh, due to this variable two variables seem to be associated seem to be causally uh, related but in actuality they are not they seem to so uh, related because of the role of a third or intermediary variable okay if you read your research part uh, 
good uh, i mean in a good way then you will be able to answer such questions uh, next is neo darwinian beliefs of social evolution were the basis of western theory of number 1 modernization number 2 ethnic superiority number 3 depoliticization number 4 dominance of religion so i hope you know something about darwinian charles darwin who gave the theory of origin of species who uh, to, uh, told us that how we dev, uh, how our evolution took place from the monkey to con, uh, present day human beings so it is uh, the neo darwinian neo means new these neo darwinian beliefs made the uh, basis of foundation of western theory of which of the following theories the answer is modernization you can remember this as neo darwinian neo means new so modernization took inspiration from this neo darwinism neo darwinism is a modified theory of darwinism explaining the origin of species on a genetic basis hence the main driving force of neo darwinism is genetic variation that our genes vary genetic mutation takes place and modernization theory is a description and explanation of the processes of transformation from traditional or underdeveloped societies to modern societies so how from traditional to modern we have developed so modernization theory have uh, basis of uh, in their basis as the neo darwinian beliefs okay so next is the general attributions to the sources like government official in news stories are referred to as number 1 off the record number 2 deep background number 3 background number 4 on the record attribution means you are giving the credit like uh, uh, if you are in your news story as a reporter if you are writing a news story so what uh, you give is attribute you attribute that story for example prime minister narendra modi has said that the country will grow the country's gdp will grow from this rate to this rate so you are directly quoting narendra modi it is on the record because uh, you are quoting the name and the source so there these are different types of uh, attributions so general attribution to sources like government official when we say according to government officials what this kind of attribution is so the answer is background So let me tell you more about this. There are four levels of attribution on the record. As I told you, that uh, uh, everything the source says may be published and quoted directly, and the source may be fully identified by name and his title, his or her title. As I said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Okay, on background, which is sometimes referred to as not for attribution, means the reporter may quote the source directly, but may not attribute the statements to the source by name. the reporter may describe the source by her position like this background government official if you say government official said that but you are not naming that government official so it is on background on deep background it is also called linley rule named after ernest k linley a newsweek columnist a source on deep background may not be quoted directly and may not be identified in any way a reporter must publish the information without any attribution or with a phrase like it has been learned that as per the information you know you say that when you say as per the information as per the news media as per the reports so it is on the background okay then of the record of the record is like uh, when you when someone is telling you something of the record it is a final level of attribution it generally means a source's information cannot be used because they are telling you off the record it is a secret information because you are you know may have some personal relation with uh, somebody but you are not supposed to quote that information and some see it as an opportunity to gain insight into official thinking or it may help them put the information they can publish in a more accurate context i mean you can uh, use this off the record statements of the record information for your for making your story more better but you can't name that person indirectly directly or in any way and you are not supposed to uh, leak that information but you know if you have that background information you can uh, make your story more accurate more precise you can give it a more accurate context <coughs> next question is 
which among the following methods or models is used to make decisions related to ethical dilemmas in media number a fog index number b i mean b flash method c freytag pyramid or d potter box so the correct answer is potter box so what is this potter box this potter box is a model for making ethical decisions developed by ralph b potter junior professor of social ethics emeritus at harvard divinity school remember this potter box uh, was given by ralph b potter okay it has four dimensions of moral analysis to help in situations where ethical dile dilemmas occur so first is facts your report or your story should be fact based number two values it may contain values but uh, that values uh, should be you know should help humanity in some way then it should involve some five principles that are aristotle's golden mean immanuel kant's categorical imperative js mills principle of utility john rawls wheel of ignorance judo christian point of view of person as an end and next is loyalties uh, you can google these five principles what they mean or you can just uh, you know uh, remember these uh, five principle as it is so basically uh, remember the ethical dilemmas is associated with potter box which is given by ralph b potter junior then there are four dimensions to it fact values principles and loyalties you are loyal to what you are doing okay and uh, you may or may if you can remember then remember these five principles next question is which among the following journalists is associated with the developmental news portal pari p a r i people's archive of rural india a kalpana sharma b gail omwet c ravish kumar or d p sainath so pari if you have come across this website uh, or news portal it is developed by p sainath okay uh, the rural india uh, p sainath has worked uh, uh, has much of his work on rural india on farmers etc he is a very big name okay next is dash is a paragraph that explains the point of the story when the lead is purposely vague a circle kicker b nut graph c teaser lead or d mystery lead when the lead is purposely vague so uh, what uh, explains it it is a nut graph or nut shell paragraph which explains the point of the story which summarizes the story okay next question is the theory of cognitive dissonance as related to advertising is based on the premise that number 1 people see what they expect to see number 2 people see what they are offered to see number 3 people see what they are made to see number 4 people see what they don't get to see so uh, if you closely examine the options see in option 2 people see what they are offered to see and option 3 people see what they are made to see they are both same so uh, they are in terms of cognitive dissonance theory they are not correct and last people see what they don't get to see it is not making sense okay so the option is people see what they expect to see some of the ways people reduce discomfort from cognitive dissonance include uh, cognitive dissonance occurs when what we believe and what uh, we are acting on are different for example we know that uh, so if we use our uh, mobile for many hours it may cause some distress or stress in us it uh, may impact our mental health but we can't stop us from uh, from doing so so to reduce this uh, discomfort people what they do is they seek information that aligns with and supports current beliefs for example if uh, some research has shown that oh yeah if you uh, watch four or five hours if you spend 4 to 5 hours on your mobile screen it is it is good for your learning for example if some study say that so you try you you seek such information this is just an example i'm just saying you just uh, you see what you are you uh, what with the, uh, your uh, beliefs aligns reducing the conflicting beliefs important and changing beliefs to reduce the feeling of conflict so people see what they expect to see they uh, this they choose the media okay next is in outdoor advertising the term ots 
opportunity to see and otr opportunity to read are referred to as a wall painting b posters c hoardings and d balloons ots and otr are related with in advertising they are related with hoardings opportunity to see is a measure in advertising media which denotes number of times the viewer is most likely to see the hoarding it is basically frequency of hoarding in how many times you see a hoarding for example if you are going from a to b point how many times you saw that hoarding then opportunity to read is uh, it refers to a hoarding and number of exposures or opportunities which a particular audience has to read a specific hoarding okay how many times you actually read the hoarding next is the single sheet advertisement printed on one side is known as a brochures b leaflets c posters and d flyers okay so the answer is flyers uh, okay let me tell you brochures and leaflets uh, they are uh, they are also a part of advertising media print media in which we do advertising but they have more than one sheet in posters may have we have one sheet but they are not generally a part of advertising okay i mean uh, the correct answer for single sheet advertisement is printed on one side is flyers next is a skeptical buyer is the one who number one makes impulsive purchase number two has negative image about the seller number 3 carefully weighs the cost pros and cons of the product being offered number 4 is keen to return the product skeptical if you understand the meaning of term skeptical skeptical means suspicion a person who doubts everything is known as skeptical so in terms of uh, customer if uh, he is a skeptical customer or buyer what he or she would do is he would carefully weigh the cost pros and cons of the product being offered people who uh, you know negotiate much and uh, you know who take so much time to finalize a product so they are the skeptical buyers okay and the three options otherwise also don't make any sense to skeptical buyer next is a commonly used and immensely valuable technique for analyzing the external environment of an organization is number 1 swot analysis number 2 pest analysis number 3 most analysis or number 4 pestel analysis uh, in uh, this it is a these are management or public relations concept so here the question is asking about external environment in external environment what we do is pest analysis uh, we want to analyze the political economical social and technological environment which are external environment but if we the question is asking internal environment then we do swot analysis s w o t for internal environment which stands for strength weakness opportunity and threat okay remember these two analysis swot and pest swot for internal environment and pest for external environment next question is who wrote the book about pr public relations titled crystallizing public opinion number 1 edward bernays number 2 iv ledbetterly number 3 jp morgan number 4 george creel so if you have read the public relations part you can easily answer this question so the answer is edward bernays crystallizing public opinion is written by edward bernays remember this next is the main objective of public relations audit is to assess number 1 strengths and weakness of uh, the option in, would include of of pr in an organization number 2 the negative image of an organization number 3 the relationship between an organization and its key publics number 4 the internal relationship of employees in an organization if you know the definition of pr what is the function of pr in an organization you can easily answer this question a pr audit why would it uh, determine the strength and weakness of pr uh, of aayega yahan pe of pr in an organization so this option is eliminated the negative image of an organization no it is not the work of pr audit it is not the objective next fourth option if you see internal relation of ship of employees in our organization no it is not the work of pr so the definition of pr says public relations it 
uh, tries to establish a goodwill or relationship between an organization and its key public so it is the objective of pr audit okay next is when the media reflect stories on issues relevant to the company under pr coverage it is often referred to as number 1 third party endorsement number 2 first party endorsement number 3 second party endorsement number 4 fourth party endorsement so media is reflecting stories on issues relevant to the company under pr coverage when media gives coverage to a company's you know company's activities so it is called third party endorsement when media is saying something for example if your company has undertook a, um uh, has launched a mega project mega power plant project in some district and media is covering it uh, as a part of under your pr coverage so it is called third party endorsement media is endorsing your activity okay and it is third party endorsement next is the 16th amendment to the indian constitution added a restriction on article 19 in the form of number 1 judicial review number 2 censorship of media contents number 3 limiting entry of media persons into public buildings or number 4 sovereignty and integrity of india so what was the base of 16th amendment indian constitution is important uh, you should read this because one or two question is being asked nearly every year okay and this article 19 is also important because it is related with freedom of speech article 19 1a is related with freedom of speech and expression so it was sovereignty and integrity of india so what was this 16th amendment act in uh, of 1963 it maintains that additional restrictions should be placed on the freedom of speech and expression peaceful assembly and association in the interest of india's sovereignty and integrity this uh, amendment wants to tell that there can be restrictions on freedom of speech and expression and peaceful assembly and association if the sovereignty and integrity of india is in danger okay if uh, this is involved sovereignty and integrity of india next is in virender versus state of punjab section 31 of the punjab special powers press act 1956 was struck down on the grounds of section 31 of punjab special powers press act why it was struck down number 1 procedural unreasonableness number 2 public interest number 3 over regulation number 4 political ill will <clears throat> so the correct answer here is procedural unreasonableness okay remember this uh, punjab special powers press act of 1956 and its section 31 was struck down what was this case uh, in virender versus state of punjab the constitutional validity of section 31 was challenged okay what this section 31 was it authorized the government to prohibit the entry of a newspaper leaflet or any publication if it contains matters likely to affect or prejudice maintenance of communal harmony or public order okay so the government could prohibit the entry of any newspaper or any publication so what was virtually it was saying it was completely prohibiting the entry or circulation of papers published in new delhi into the whole of punjab okay uh, so it did not place any time limit for the operation of any order under it or provide for representation against it this action was held to be unreasonable and unconstitutional because it was unreasonable if you are banning the entry of every newspaper if uh, you find a certain or a slight uh, uh, think that you can label as it is going to disturb the communal harmony so you can ban it so it was struck down on the basis of unreasonableness procedural unreasonableness <coughs> next question is section 292 of the indian penal code prescribes punishment for section 292 of ipc number 1 copyright infringement number 2 obscene publication number 3 contempt of court number 4 prejudicing national integration through media in your media laws and ethic unit this is given and this is important so the correct answer is obscene publication so section 292 of ipc prohibits the sale distribution exhibition or possession of any obscene object or material that are lascivious or likely to corrupt corrupt and deprave people section 292 remember this uh, next is copyright is considered as 
नंबर वन पब्लिक प्रॉपर्टी नंबर टू इंडस्ट्रियल प्रॉपर्टी नंबर थ्री नॉन सब्सटेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी नंबर फोर नॉन इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी सो बेसिकली कॉपी राइट इज एन इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी एंड इट इज ऑल्सो एन इंडस्ट्रियल प्रॉपर्टी ओके बिकॉज यू क्लेम कॉपी राइट ऑन ऑन बुक्स ऑन सिनेमाटोग्राफिक मटीरियल ऑन सच लिटरेरी वर्क ओके सो इट इज एन इंडस्ट्रियल प्रॉपर्टी नेक्स्ट इज In media management, the term performance means. <coughs> Sorry for the cough. Number one, economic performance only. Number two, social perform. Uh, so responsibility only. Number three, both economic and social. Number four, administrative flows only. So media management may performance का मतलब क्या होता है? How uh, media should perform? So it includes both economic performance also, but it's social responsibility also it is uh, getting revenue uh, it is making profit so economic performance but it should not deviate from its social responsibility also next is lower level media management is also known as number 1 staff management number 2 branch management number 3 motivational management number 4 operative level management so media management is also a unit in your ugc net syllabus uh, so read it well at least cover the basics okay so the correct answer is operative level management the lower level management is called operative level management these are the staff who perform the lower level i mean the tasks at the ground okay next question is the main aim of professional subculture in media management is to main aim of professional subculture in media management number 1 unite individuals number 2 create divided groups number 3 influence workers to be isolated number 4 produce dissimilarities in work culture when this is a kind of confusing question but remember what i have told you that whenever ex- negative situa- negative statements are given and extreme statements are given they are generally wrong so here if you examine the options 2 3 and 4 they are very negative statements and why any media management would divide groups or influence workers to be isolated or produce dissimilarities in work culture while media management wants to any management any company any industry what they want that their employees work in tandem in collaboration in a united way okay so the correct answer is number 1 unite individuals okay Next question is Adobe InDesign is used in number one radio documentaries, number two television dra- drama production, number three blogs on internet, number four newspaper. So Adobe In InDesign. If you have ever come across this software, it is a software used in newspapers. InDesign is a desktop publishing and layout application for creating books, magazines, and brochures, as well as print and digital publications. It's the industry standard editing software for laying out long form multi page documents but it's not limited to that of course it can do many other functions also but it is basically for desktop publishing for newspapers books magazines etc next is which among the following communico communo collegist usefully distinguished between the paradigms of interaction which was called the extractive and the immersive number 1 alan turing number 2 peter Lunen field number three, Rosan Alucre number four, P. Hayward. So there are many communication paradigms, paradigms of interaction. How we human beings or uh, interact, or how we interact with the computers. So who distinguished between extractive and immersive uh, interaction paradigms? So it was Peter Lunen field in nineteen ninety three. Okay. So the last question for today's video is. photorealism in cgi computer graphics interface and hyper realist imagery and narrative structures of disney pixar and dreamworks animated features are all examples of what jean louis commonly calls number a reality effects number b distancing effect c anti reality or d indexicality so in ict part you have uh, in ugc net syllabus you have ict also in your syllabus so uh, try to have a hold of you know important uh, technologies like animation 
computer graphics just read the basics so here the correct answer is reality effects they are understood as or are claimed to be in different ways offering a more realistic experience a less mediated grasp of the world and experience each of these reality effects references not the actual external wood directly but rather other cinematic and media conventions photorealism is the accurate depiction of photography not an index of the world okay uh, the statement might confuse you but uh, uh, so you can remember this by associating the name of jean louis comdly with reality effects with photorealism okay so uh, that's it for today and i want to tell you that we will keep doing these pyqs and uh, maybe for uh, your june 2024 exam ugc net exam i will be able to cover all the pyqs i hope that but i will not be done with all the content because it is a very time consuming process and besides that i have to do my own my phd work and some other stuff also so please be patient with me and uh, you can you know follow these pyqs throughout your preparation till june paper uh, i am quite uh, sure that if you do all the pyqs then you can easily crack at least net exam if not jrf then maybe if you have basic understanding and then you can use your common sense and you have followed the pyqs you can crack the net exam at least if not jrf okay so take care happy learning goodbye